people who have a problem with a woman starring in a superhero movie probably don't really care about women's rights either. This Organized Chaos video is brought to you by Gems Art Studio. This video is also brought to you by viewers like you. Thank you. Hello there. So, Roe vs. Wade was overturned, which is bullshit. I, I don't even have the words for it. Uh, it happened a few days ago by the time recording this. And it's completely obnoxious. Uh, essentially, lawmakers are deciding they can control a woman's body, and I am 100% against it. Uh, I'm 100% pro-choice. I'm tired of the debate. I don't want to make our abortion debate video. It's so dumb, and at the end of the day, for me, it just comes down to a woman's choice, what what they want to do with their body. Uh, we don't have the right to tell them what they can do with their body, and I don't give a fuck about the pre-born. I care about the post-born. I care about people alive, not, not hypothetical people that might come together, not clumps of cells that might come together and form a human being. Or might not. We have to make sure the people alive have the best lives possible before we worry about the pre-born. However, with that in mind, one thing I've definitely noticed is how these anti-woke guys also seem to be coming down pre-universally anti-abortion as well. I'm sure there's rare exceptions, but if you think about it, people who have a problem with a woman starring in a superhero movie probably don't really care about women's rights either. So the overlap is almost certainly a thing. It's almost certainly very strong. So right now, what I thought would be fun is to look over one of the most woke movies in the MCU of recent times. And I've, of course, talking about Spider-Man No Way Home. Whoa! How on earth does that even... And you might be thinking, wait a minute. Spider-Man No Way Home made a lot of money. That was the big uh, not, not woke, not broke movie. That was the one that proved the woke ideology is faulty, right? Because Spider-Man No Way Home totally isn't woke. No doubt the movie boasts a number of streams of appeal, including the social media popularity of stars Tom Holland and Zendaya, as well as a genuinely inventive fan-servicing plotline. But there's one factor you can't overlook yet probably won't hear much about in mainstream box office analysis. That is, if you don't go woke, you not only don't go broke, you stand to rake in piles and piles of cash. Here are all the ways No Way Home bucked the woke MCU trend. But the problem is, it is like super woke. Almost all the supporting characters in Spider-Man No Way Home have been race swapped, which is a, a lot to make it fairly woke. Um, but there's also another major theme to Spider-Man No Way Home that makes it super woke. It makes it more woke than a lot of the other MCU movies I can think of. So, to to go ahead and uh, reinforce this, let's look at a couple of the past MCU movies. The most recent one we've had is Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. So what woke elements are in there? Well, we have a uh, Latino female character in a strong supporting role. That being said, that is not a race or gender swapped character. And we have people of color in strong supporting roles in Spider-Man No Way Home. So I would definitely consider that a wash. And the next element we would have to look at would be uh, what everybody else likes to scream about, how Wanda took over the movie from Doctor Strange, which is just objectively not true. Doctor Strange had way more screen time than Wanda by a huge margin. And Wanda simply had the same storyline as Doctor Octopus in Spider-Man 2. So if you say she took over the movie and became the star from Doctor Strange, then you would also have to say that Doctor Octopus took over the story of Spider-Man 2 and became the star. Either that or you just have to admit they're both the villain. So I think that one's pretty fairly a wash too. So uh, Spider-Man No Way Home, just by having some... A lot of race swapped supporting characters. More woke than Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, clearly. Next we have the Eternals, but we're actually going to hold off on the Eternals until we get to the end here. 
So next, we're going to look at Shang-Chi. Well, what's woke about Shang-Chi? The character is Asian, and he's Asian in the movie, so that doesn't seem particularly woke. So probably the most woke thing in Shang-Chi would be you have women in strong, as strong warriors in strong supporting roles. Which sounds about equally as woke as Terminator 2 Judgment Day that has Sarah Connor. A character that all these anti-woke people seem to love. And a movie that all these people seem to bring up as an example of being anti-woke. Fucking men like you built the hydrogen bomb. Men like you thought it up. You don't know what it's like to really create something. To create a life. Feel it growing inside you. All you know how to create is death and destruction. Mom! Well, it is just as woke as Shang-Chi. So if we're going to call Terminator 2 not woke, then we must also call Shang-Chi not woke. So automatically it becomes less woke than Spider-Man No Way Home. And now that brings us to Black Widow. What's the most woke thing in Black Widow? Really? No. Maybe the gender-swapped um, Taskmaster, which is such a minor character, I don't... It doesn't mean anything. Um, yeah, it stars a woman. Um, that's really it. It doesn't have a strong female power message. It's just a woman spy getting together for family and fighting bad guys. Um, they happen to gender swap Taskmaster, and it doesn't matter, because Taskmaster has, like, no lines in that movie and no character. Taskmaster sucks in that movie. It doesn't matter if a woman plays it, doesn't matter if a man plays it, Taskmaster sucks in that movie. Um, and there's nothing woke about a female Taskmaster, just like there's nothing woke about a spy movie that happens to star a woman. So, once again, just by default, just by having characters who prominent, just by having prominent supporting characters who are race swapped, Spider Man No Way Home becomes more woke than Black Widow. And now we get to Eternals. Because the big thing Eternals was criticized for was having lots of race and gender swapped characters within the main team of the Eternals, which is absolutely true. There's a lot, and there's probably more than even in Spider-Man No Way Home. So does that make it more woke? Well, wait a minute. Because Eternals also has a theme. Remember, the Deviants were getting released because the temperature on Earth was getting hotter. They must have been trapped in the ice for centuries and broke free last week when the glaciers started to melt. They were frozen in ice and they were thawing out. So Eternals had that cool global warming theme very woke except it fucking didn't as the earth's core heats up for the emergence it took back that theme and said the reason it was warming up was because the celestial was about right to be born so it had set up for this theme and didn't do it but you know what does have a fairly progressive theme spider-man no way home spider-man no way home has a pretty explicit theme of rehabilitation over punishment. Strange. We can't send them back. Not yet. Why? Well, some of these guys are going to die. Spider-Man No Way Home is also fairly explicitly against the death penalty. It sets up a revenge arc for MCU Peter to go after Green Goblin after what happens to Aunt May and to kill him. And he doesn't do it, because this movie is against capital punishment. This movie is actually fairly progressive and woke. And that's why, looking at the post-pandemic MCU movies, using the logic of the anti-woke crowd, Spider-Man No Way Home would have to be the most woke MCU movie. And Spider-Man No Way Home made $1.9 billion dollars at the box office just looking at the post-pandemic movies that tells me the problem with the other ones is that they don't go woke enough they need to go more woke now of course it's not the most woke mcu movie of all time 
that would probably have to go to Captain Marvel, who, which is a movie that is pretty explicitly against the patriarchy. Well, I guess not, it's not explicitly against the patriarchy, but strongly implied to be against the patriarchy. And that movie made $1.1 billion. It's almost like get woke, get broke doesn't mean anything. It's just a catchphrase that is absolutely meaningless to the grand scheme of things. And that's the thing. These anti-woke people don't have a clear, concise ideology. It's all buzzwords and bullshit. They think order and chaos are somehow opposites and try to control what won't. I used to fuck guys like you in prison. <laughs>